So much of our time now is spent in front of a screen watching video that it would be almost impossible really to talk about public relations and not talk about video in some way. It would be, it's naive to think that we could get away without talking about video and using it as a public relations tool. So, so let's do that here real briefly and talk about using video in public relations. Now I will tell you up front, this is not going to be a highly technical video. There are lots of uh, tutorials on YouTube about making videos and, and the, the technical aspects of it. I want to focus just really on, on what the use is here in public relations and just a few key considerations for specifically creating video to be used in public relations campaigns. So first, why do we use video? Why do we use video? Well, first of all, video has really superior storytelling, right? We can tell a story in video in a way that we can't just by using text and, and language and and things we can we can get some superior storytelling we can reach people's emotions and tug at their heartstrings and and really get them excited about things in a way that we can't in more traditional communication formats so uh, video has just a superior storytelling element which is why it's so um, pervasive in our in our culture it has a much higher engagement level than other types of of media and other other channels as well uh, because again it engages a lot of different senses for us and engages them more actively and and it's, and it's really what we're used to so um so there's a higher engagement level for people when we're watching video it also simplifies complex info it, it can simplify really complex ideas things that when we read them, we have to read that thing four or five, six times or whatever, and we still may not have any idea. We can get a much better picture from a picture and we can get an even better picture from a video, right? We can simplify this complex idea because we see it at work. And for many people, that's just a, a better method of, of learning. It also creates connection. It creates connection. You know, I teach online a lot. And one of the reasons I do these videos is because it helps me create connection with students that I don't even see in the classroom. I traditionally taught in the classroom for many, many years. And I, and I, and I really loved that connection with students. Um, and I don't get that as much in the same way in an online class. So this allows me to help connect with the students and help them connect with me through that topic and through these videos. So, and that's exactly what video does. It creates connection between the viewer and the content creator. And, and it does that in a superior way to other forms of, of communication as well. And it's accessible across platforms. As we know, people want to watch things and they want to access things as and where they want and video allows us to do that if you create video in, the, in an appropriate way they can watch it on their computer they can watch it on their phone they can watch it on their tv they can watch it wherever video is accessible across many different platforms that we use on an everyday basis right computers phones tablets all those things uh, we can watch video just about anywhere so it's very very accessible across different platforms uh, it doesn't have as many of the formatting issues that you might with with just a more traditional document those areas so so lots of reasons why we use video um, not only those things but also because everybody watches video i mean uh, it's it's incredible how much time we spend watching video so it's just what we're used to and so uh, for all those reasons we ought to be using video as well for public relations to meet people where they are at and bring them this information where they are at right Okay. Now I said, I'm not going to get really into the technical weeds of creating video and, and offer a lot of that, but I do want to give a few tips for creating video content specifically as it relates to public relations. So uh, first, when you're creating video in the respects that we're talking about, you want to keep it focused. And I don't just mean in terms of the camera, although that's important too, but you want to keep it focused and narrow. You want the content uh, area to be narrow. You don't want to talk about everything all the time. When I first started doing videos like this for classes, they would be like hour long lecture videos, basically just replicating what I would lecture on in a classroom for an hour or more, you know, but that's not how people ingest information. That's not how they, that's not how they access and digest information. And so I've, I've taken to chunking it down like this into, and there's still, you know, it can get kind of long, up to 15 minutes is kind of my maximum, but I, I try and keep it around 10 minutes or less because, um, it just needs to be that focus. So people can access it and then move on to something else and come back for something different if they need to. So your videos, when we're creating for public relations need to be focused. They need to have a specific purpose, a specific objective, and stay focused on that laser focused on that one simple thing. Don't try and do everything in one video. Uh, try and accomplish one specific thing in a video. That's a much better idea and much more manageable target. Details matter. You know, you've heard that expression, don't sweat the small stuff. Not here. Sweat the small stuff. Details matter. What's behind the person in that shot? What, what's, what's in your background? 
What's the sound like? What is we're going to talk about? What's the lighting like? What all these details matter in video? Everything matters. You could have, you know, the greatest like camera in the world, which is probably on your smartphone. Your smartphone has a camera that's a hundred times better than what they used to shoot, you know, feature films on in the seventies. So getting clear video is not the issue. It's the rest of the stuff. And so those details though matter. So don't overlook those things and just say, well, I've got this really cool, uh, cool shot and cool idea or whatever. All the rest of the details matter as well. So pay attention to the small stuff. It makes all the difference. Try and make your videos timeless, meaning try not to make them connected to a specific, unless it's for a specific event that's happening at a particular time and a particular place, then you, you want to connect it to that. But if you're just sharing content and things like this, try and make it timeless so that you're not dating that video so that you're not putting information in there that's going to be uh, outdated in, in a year or two. And then you got to go back and either redo the thing or the video is worthless or whatever. So um, try and make it as timeless as possible and, uh, and help extend the lifespan of that video. So you can use it for longer. You're putting time and energy into this. And, and so the longer you can use it, the more value it's going to have for you. So make it as timeless as possible. You ought to sound good. Okay. Now, you don't need to run out and get all kinds of fancy sound equipment and things. Some basic stuff will help. But again, anybody can put together a pretty clear video. Uh, your phone is going to be, it's going to have a great camera. If you have a fairly updated phone, smartphone, then it's going to have a really good camera and you can record really sharp, clear video on that. But it's going to sound terrible, right? Uh, it's going to sound terrible. You need to focus on sound. Uh, make sure it sounds good. Make sure you're getting rid of as many background noises as possible, which a good mic will help with. But you also need to record in an area that's that's not going to have a ton of background noises. So you got to pick that spot. Again, details matter. Pick the right spot. Also, invest a little bit. If you're going to be doing this and taking it seriously, you don't have to go all in and, and put together a full on sound studio. But but you ought to have a decent mic. I mean, the mic I'm using for this isn't high end by any stretch. It's like a $60 mic, but it does the job for this specific purpose. It's a really good mic and shout out to the, the Samson Q2U. Uh, it's I've been using this mic for several years now. It's got good, clear quality sound. It excludes a lot of other sounds and it's certainly better than whatever sound I would have on my, just on my computer or whatever, and gives a better sound. So that matters when, when you sound really bad, even if it looks good, you know, it just, you lose something in that sense in the video. So do what you can to sound good, both by using the right equipment and also by where you record and all those little, the little decisions, and those little details that matter. When you sweat the small stuff, it, it helps. Similar thing for lighting, get the lighting right. Now, again, you don't have to go out and spend a thousand dollars on a professional lighting rig or whatever. You can do it, first of all, just by making sure that you're recording, you know, if you're, if you're inside, be in a well-lit room with natural light. Natural light is the best light you can have and then position yourself so that you're not in the shadows and the shadows aren't really playing all over your video. Um, that's, that's, that's all you really need to do. And, and it's very base level. You don't need anything as long as you can find a well-lit room where you can kind of control the shadows and in, in, in terms of how you shoot it and the angle that you choose to shoot it, uh, you can control those shadows a little bit and, uh, and do that. But even if you get, I'm using a, a lighting rig, if you want to call it that, I've got a couple lights. I've got what's called a key light. And I've got a couple fill lights. The key light is the main light that is providing light on me because the area where I record these in my office really has weird sunlight throughout the day. Part of the day, it's, it's like being, you know, right in the center of the sun. And then the other part of the day, it's on the dark side of the moon. So it's, it's all over the place with the lighting. So in order to control that, I have this key light. It gives me consistent light, consistent light level, and allows me to light what's behind me as needed. And then I have two what are called fill lights, one on either side, just small little lights that help um, get rid of the shadows created by the key light. If that makes sense. So I've got them not shining directly on me, but behind me to help uh, dilute the shadows that are back there, in part because I use a green screen and you want that green screen to have a nice solid fill and be a consistent color all the way across so that it, it doesn't break up a lot and really uh, pixelate, right? So, um, so yes, this is all green screen behind me. And those lights, these three lights that I have are really basic. I bought them off of Amazon. They're not professional lighting. And I think how much that I, it was definitely for all three of them was definitely less than $150. Uh, it might've been less than a hundred dollars for all three. I can't remember, but 
I have the one larger key light, the main light that I use. And then my two fill lights are actually lights that you can attach to a, a camera and use for it to light. I mean, you can put it on a camera rig. They have a, uh, what's called a cold shoe attachment that you can put on. So they're, I mean, they're just really tiny. They're about, they're about an inch and a half by an inch and a half or two by two or something like that. And, uh, and so it's really was fairly inexpensive. Um, and because I do this enough that, uh, that that was worthwhile, then that was a good investment for me. Again, my mic between my mic and my lights, I'm less than $200 probably all in uh, for those things. And it really has upgraded my video to, um, to, a, to a different level. Okay. Now I don't, I'm not doing this professionally. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to Hollywood with this stuff. Right. But it has upgraded it enough that, that I think it helps, uh, you know, the people watching these videos understand them better and be less distracted by terrible sound and terrible shadows and lighting and things. So those are the things that matter. Really, we do all these things to remove distraction. Probably before I mentioned this, if you've watched this or any other video, you hadn't thought much about my sound or my lighting or anything else. And that's great. I don't want you to. I want you to focus on the content, which is the idea. But because I have these things, it removes a lot of the other, other distractions um, that would be in place maybe if I didn't have them. If you were to go back and check out to my older videos, which aren't even on this channel, I don't think, but, uh, but when I, when I used to do some of these older lecture videos for my students, they're fine. The content is there, but it's really tinny sound and the light is, is, is bad and it's, it's distracting, right? So for me, this is enough of an investment to make it worthwhile to improve these videos. Okay. So if you have those, uh, great. If not, then just find a nice secluded place with natural light and, and you'll be fine. Right? So you don't have to go all that far, but if you're doing this for a professional like public relations video, then you need to invest a little bit in some of this equipment to get those details right. Okay? It's easy to find a good camera. It's tougher to find um, just the perfect sound and lighting without being intentional and, and, uh, and investing at least a little bit into some equipment for that. Okay? But those details matter. They will make the difference. Okay? So whether or not this is your area of expertise, <clears throat> that's fine. If it's not, then pull somebody else in right? Pull somebody else in, uh, but get the video right. If you're going to make a video, do it right and do it well. There's nothing worse than a terrible video. You're better off with no video at all than having a video that's, that's bad. or just going to be made fun of. Um, so, um, as you're doing this, you're going to need to weigh out kind of like, what are the pros and cons of, of doing all this? Is it really worth it? Um, I think video is worth it in many ways for me. So, so that's why I do it, but you're going to have to decide for this particular issue, this campaign, this, this, whatever, is this worth the time? Do we already have this stuff? Do we have these resources? Do we have somebody in the house who knows how to do this stuff um, that we can do that? If not, um, then, you know, you're going to have to think about, is, is it worth the investment of time to find out how to do it and, and, uh, or to find somebody who can do it or, or to invest the money into doing it and, and doing it that way. But, um, but those are questions you're going to need to ask because you want to do it well or don't do it at all. Hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about the role of a uh, video in public relations, why it might be important and some of the different considerations you might think about as you're, as you're wondering whether or not you should include video as part of your, your public relations effort. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have questions, please feel free to email me and let me know. I'd be happy to discuss those with you and, and, uh, and share any insight that I can with you. But in the meantime, I hope that, uh, that, that this has given you a new perspective on how you might be able to use video in your future public relations efforts.